Hello! Once again, I thought that a little bit of video content might add some clarity to this week's content. This week, we started reading a little bit about skepticism, empiricism, and rationalism as we continue our study in epistemology. Now, remember that epistemology is a matter of what it takes to pass something from belief and into knowledge. And when it comes to skepticism, this is something that is very often misunderstood. The skepticism differs from the commonplace usage, differs from the lexical definition in terms of its actual philosophical definition. Skepticism is not a matter of being a skeptical person. It's not a matter of being negative. Skepticism means that there is no real criteria that can pass something from belief to knowledge. And a lot of people wonder, how does a skeptic function in this day and age when so many things are held to be true and so many modern conveniences? And honestly, it doesn't really matter to the skeptic. It isn't that the skeptic doesn't believe any of the things that he sees or she sees. It's not the skeptic doesn't believe that there are things that are commonly understood. It's just a matter that the skeptic sees the world in terms of a fact that nothing can actually make it count as knowledge. They're all beliefs, and the skeptic may have a number of very deeply held beliefs, and may see things as medical science and so on, as a number of wonderful things to believe, but that they will never, ever count as true knowledge. Now, how did such a movement come to be? A lot of students have asked me. Well, there are a number of places for the origin of skepticism, but one of the most popular skeptics in the ancient world was Sextus Empiricus. Hopefully we'll have some video content on him specifically. But Sextus, Sextus Empiricus said that knowledge is non-existent, and that the reason why things are only belief is because of the way that we gain so much of our understanding of the world. Typically, we understand the world through our senses, and our senses give us very different perceptions of the world from person to person, and even sometimes the same sense and the same person can give different results. For example, if you take a look at the ocean, you can clearly see that the ocean looks blue, and if you were to take a scoop of water out of that same ocean, it's the same water that appeared blue, but you look at it now in that glass, and it appears clear. So we have the same substance and the same sense, and it's giving you two different sets of information. And this is just one example of why he thinks that the senses are not entirely reliable. Now, he never said that there was no such thing as knowledge, but on anything that you would present to him, he would say that I suspend judgment on this matter and all other matters I have encountered. He would not even say, go so far as to say that he knew that there was no knowledge. Empiricism, on the other hand, justifies beliefs on the fact that they occur to the senses. They say that the senses are the most reliable. And an empirical scientist relies very much on empiricism, relies on observation. Things like chemistry, biology, geology, these are all empirical senses or empirical sciences, rather. They rely, based on our observation and repetition, to say that something is so. Now, one of the things about empiricism is that it constantly has to be revised. One of the things that I hear very often in the class is that Pluto is no longer a planet, which is very true. We called it a planet for several years, but then we had to reevaluate the criteria of what makes something a planet. And now, Pluto no longer qualifies, so Pluto is not a planet. Rationalism is another idea that often gets misunderstood on the first reading. Rationalism is not a matter of you being a reasonable person or a rational person. It's not a matter of being able to reason out and justify why you did such and such. Rationalism places priority on those ideas that do not rely upon the senses. Descartes had a wonderful example of this in the reading for this week. Descartes had said that he had used skepticism to doubt everything that he knew, and he kept 
doubting until we could find one idea that was beyond a doubt. And that one idea that he found was this idea that I cannot doubt my own existence. I think, therefore, I must exist. I think, therefore, I am. That is a rationalist idea. That is a rationalist principle. It relies not on observation, but on reason alone. Rationalists generally place a very high priority on things such as mathematics, because these are things that don't require observation. They are rational principles that are true, regardless of what your observations are. If you guys have any questions, guys and gals, of course, have any questions, please feel free to ask in the discussion board, and we'll get to you as soon as possible. Have a good week, and good luck with the rest of the reading.